All right, guys. So I have been asked on several occasions to explain how to do a diamond edge finish applique. Now, I know you've seen them. And the way it works in ink stitch, the way we're going to do it in ink stitch, it's actually really simple and can be applied to many different little patterns, not only just a diamond, but a circle, something like that. And I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do just the simple letter T. Go to the letters. I'm going to make sure I'm using Source Sand 3, which is something that came with my Open Sousa Tumbleweed distribution, which pretty much tells me it is an open source font that you can probably get from Google Fonts or someplace like that. I've got it set to heavy, which means very block. I'm going to expand that. And I'm using a 4x4 four four standard pocket size, 4x4 four four inch standard pocket size. And I'm just, I'm going to be inside that anyway. And there's our letter. We're done. Okay. No, we're not. All right. For system fonts, anytime you use system fonts and you basically want to do anything in Ink Stitch with that, you have to turn those system fonts into a path that SVG can work with, that uh, Inkscape can work with. So, got my system font letter. I'm going to go object path. Now I can work with it. I am going to go to layer, which you can get to from layer, layer objects, or object layer and objects, which will get you to both of those to the same location. Ah, okay, slow down. Now, now that I'm in these, this layer and objects, I am going to go ahead and go to into ink, ink stitch params. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is a running stitch, which it is outstanding and most excellent. And let's see. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this stop after right here. And I'm going to put that little boy on there. So what that does is it's going to tell my multi-needle machine to stop after it has stitched this object. If you have a single needle machine and it and your single needle machine does not recognize ink stitches command to stop, just change colors in your digitizing right here. When you change colors, that will tell your single needle flatbed machine that it needs to stop and give you time to change the needle you're not or, or change the thread you're not actually changing the thread what you're doing is you're working your piece of fabric so that's a way to make your single needle stop is just change the color in my case multi-needle machine it recognizes the commands i'm going to tell it to stop which i have with that said now i'm going to duplicate this two times I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that second one and make sure that the stop is also on that one, which it is stop after. Oh, you know what? And I also need it to trim after because I got to pull that hoop out. I'm going to go back into this bottom one. I'm going to do the same thing. Go into params and set that to trim. And you can also do that with selecting these two and going to ink stitch, ex, um, commands, attach commands to selected objects, and trim and stop. So either way should do it. And I'm doing both ways just to show you. Commands, attach command, trim and stop. Okay. So on this last one, we go into extensions, ink stitch, params, and I'm going to turn off that stop, just that stop and trim, just because I don't need it on that last one, because it's the last one. I am going to temporarily hide. Well, actually what I'm going to do is, now that I've attached commands, I'm going to go extensions, ink stitch, commands, view, display, Hide object commands right there. I'm going to select that. And now my little 
icons go away so I don't have to deal with those seeing those I'm gonna select both of these and I'm gonna hide them so now I'm only working with this very top path now that we're working with that very top path what we're going to do is we're gonna make a new design over here on the side I'm going to select my busy air tool I'm gonna to click I'm going to drag down. I'm going to hold the left control button so that I get a nice, pretty 45 degree angle. And how long you make that is kind of, it's kind of up to you. So I want, I think I want it to be about six mil, seven mil long, I think. So let's select that. Let's see how long we actually are on it. We are. Actually, we're about seven mil long on that line. So I'm good with that. I think I'm good with that. All right. I'm going to control D to duplicate it. And on that duplicate path, I'm going to select this icon right here or this one right here. Either one will work. And it's going to flip that top layer so that we get the nice little X. This is the beginning of our diamond pattern. Now, I have that selected. What I'm going to do is from this, I'm going to, I've got, I need to highlight both of them. So over here, you can see I've got both of these highlighted. With both of those highlighted, I'm going to press Control K, which is combined. You can also do Object or Path. Okay, it's Path Combine is Control K. So now those two lines are one object now with that being one object i'm going to control c for copy and then i'm going to select this top path top layer of my t and i'm going to go into path effects which you can also get from path path effects i already have it up here i'm just going to click that tab drop down and do pattern along path Pattern source is going to be you draw it, you copy, which I've technically already done, or you paste. And since I've already copied, I'm just going to paste. Boom. It doesn't look much like an X because it's not. This is single stretch, so it's one, it's that one little X it's very stretched out. So you need to change this to repeated. There's our X. And you can also do repeated stretched if that looks better. You can kind of just pick on your own which one of those you'd like it to be. With that having been done, I am going to actually, so I can see this a little better, I'm going to go into stroke style and I'm going to shrink that stroke style down a little bit so it looks more like just single lines so much better so much better all right now we're still I went back to path effects you have some options here you can change your width which changes how wide your X is I'm gonna sit back and back all right spacing now this spacing if you increase that you'll actually increase the distance between the X's and if they're not touching, they're not going to really look like diamond shapes. But you can do this if you want to. It's not going to have a good turnout because you're going to have jump stitches in between each of the X's. Yeah, it's not going to be good. So I'm going to, I am going to set that one back to zero. In fact, you can actually go in the other direction. And you can have them crossing like that. So that could make a good little extra design. That's kind of neat, actually. And then set that width down a little bit. It's getting a little uh, crowded, so you might have to make your X bigger. But yeah, looks like a good option, too. And I'm going to go ahead and set that spacing back to zero. Normal offset is you're just the original line. You're offsetting it from that original line. And your tangential offset is you're you're pulling it off from the original um, beginning 
basically just pushing it around. In your normal offset, you can go plus one, plus will take it one way from the line, negative will go in the other direction. Um, pattern is vertical. If, you're, if you make your original pattern, like arrows pointing up, you can change pattern to vertical and it'll make your arrows go in the right direction, theoretically. Uh, hide width, not, not sure. Offset and unit of pattern side, I'm not sure of that either. Using nearby ends, not sure of that either. Which means, it might just mean that it's making that one line. Having explained all that, this is basically all there is to it. Now from here, we need to go path and object to path. Now this is no longer a path effect, it is the path. So when you when you click on this and you go into visualize, you're you're gonna notice a, a little bit of a problem right away. Yep, you're gonna wanna have a lot of jump stitches. It's basically right, except for the jump stitches. But it looks pretty good. Okay, so what you can do, after, and you can also, now that you have it as a path, you can fix these, these little missing pieces. You can fix those. You can go in there and do some finer detail work to get it look exactly like you want it to. So what I usually do from here is I go extensions, ink stitch, um, tools, stroke, auto route running stitches with no trim jump stitches. Hit, hit OK. Now when we go in there and look at it, it's going to look a lot better. No more jump stitches, except for the design that I didn't take out. I do that like every time I do this sort of thing. But you do see that uh, there's a few corners and such here that needs to be fixed. So we are going to stitch this out. I'm going to show you it in action. Don't forget before you create your final product to delete this, um, your pattern that you used. Yes, this could use a little bit of extra love. No, I'm not going to give it that much time. If you're doing this for a finalized version, it's not going to take that long. Spend 15 minutes on it, it'll look just fine. This will work for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and save this and into an embroider file and stitch it out real quick before you save it. Make sure that you reshow your underneath hidden paths. Otherwise, they won't stitch. So, yeah, nice little tip. I almost messed up there, but I'll be right back. Clip I'm showing here is, of course, it's the just diagram of the pattern. We put the piece of fabric in. The next little clip is it's stitching that piece of fabric down. And then we're going to go with the final little extra scene here is it's actually doing the X pattern. You can see that it goes up a little bit and it comes back down and goes up a little bit, comes back down. But and We'll let this run for just a second so you can see what it's doing. I have sped it up just a little bit. And now here is the final image result. Not too bad. I didn't spend much time on this. I would have spent actually less time on this had I, well, for the same result if I hadn't been doing this tutorial. But if I was doing it for a final project, something we're selling, I would have definitely spent more time on it. Now, the neat, really neat thing about doing this in this fashion is you can use circles as your pattern. You can use dollar signs as your pattern. You can turn, you can make squares your pattern. You can do arrows as your pattern. It's just, you can do just, S's or letters or whatever. You can do anything that you want to do as your pattern. That's the really cool thing. You could actually do, if you're doing an applique of the letter A, 
you could do a pattern of the letter A in your edge edging, your edge, final edge, and you could have it stitch your applique A edge in A's. It's just the, the possibilities are limitless, but this is how you do it. So, hope that helped you out. That's all for this video. I thank you so very much for watching. Until next time.